Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and this is Cindy Oliver and she's a dog. Now the 21st of February this year was a big day. It was my 58th birthday. Although for some strange reason, the media didn't cover it. However, a number of media outlets, particularly in the UK, did cover another event that happened that day. The Office for National Statistics, the ONS, released updated statistics on mortality by vaccination status. And unsurprisingly, the data show the same as all the previous releases, which is that the mortality rate is higher in people who are unvaccinated than people who are vaccinated. Now, this presented a bit of a problem for anti-vaxxers because for a while they had been trying to suggest that the ONS had stopped releasing data because they didn't want you to see the data. And here's an example of someone doing that. Office for National Statistics, completely different topic now. Office for National Statistics in the UK, check out the link for yourself. As we say, um, completely different topic now. Uh, They look at deaths by vaccination status, or they did. Now, um, the latest data set for this was uploaded on the 31st of May. 2022 this is up to date as the as of the 31st of may 2022 eight months ago now eight months ago now before that let's just look at when they uploaded so they uploaded in july 2021 then they waited a couple of months august september uh october they updated the so that so that's a two-month gap Uh, that's a one-month gap there October, November, December. So that's a two-month gap there when they uploaded December, January. So that's a one-month gap there. Uh, Then January, February, March. So that's a three-month gap there. Then they uploaded uh, March, April, May. So that's a two-month gap there. And now we have a eight-month gap now. So having uploaded religiously... Two months, one month, two months, two months, one one month, three months, two months. It's now eight months since they've uploaded. Because it really would be good if they would upload and uh, let us know how um, how effective uh, these vaccines have been. Why on earth haven't they done that? Why aren't they publishing this data to show us how many lives have been saved by COVID vaccination? And for those of you who are not looking at a screen, John finished the clip with a screenshot of a poster saying, barriers to transparency. Now I'll ignore the embarrassing fact that John doesn't realise that the date the data covers isn't the same as the upload date. John recorded this video on the 11th of February and at that time, this notice was on the ONS website which made it clear that an updated data set would be released on the 21st of February and also outlined the reasons for the delay, which we will get on to. What was John saying about transparency? But back to the latest release of ONS mortality statistics. Did anti-vaxxers accept that they were wrong and embrace the new data? Of course not. They have come up with some amazingly creative ways of suggesting that the figures are wrong. And it just so happens that Professor Norman Fenton recorded a video with Dr John Campbell espousing the various bollocks from his fellow anti-vaxxers. In this video, we will be explaining why he's wrong. But first, we are going to go back to the science and explain how the ONS puts together their data. This figure and the next few that I'm going to show you come from a gentleman called Michael George who has some expertise in data analysis and I'll provide a link to an article he wrote about it in this video's description if you want more details. So the starting point of the data is the 2021 
census data. And at the moment, they have only included people over 18, but they will be doing a later release, including those 17 and younger. This data is then linked to people with NHS numbers. People who can't be linked are not included in the data set, and these are the people that are shown in grey in the figure. These records are then linked to the National Immunisation Management System, or NIMS as it's known, which gives us three groups, the vaccinated, the unvaccinated and the unlinked. And you are in the vaccinated group the moment you are vaccinated. And also anyone whose vaccination record doesn't make sense is also moved to the unlinked group. For instance, if they were recorded as having two first doses, for, as an example. And obviously the makeup of the groups will change over time as a lot of people will move from the unvaccinated group to the vaccinated group. The population is then linked to the death registrations via NHS numbers. Now, importantly here, if anyone dies from the unlinked group, they are not included in the data set. They only include deaths where the vaccination status is definitely known. Now, obviously, this method means that the data set is a subset of the total population, but it does include about 91.6% of the population on the day of the census, which is pretty good. And importantly, the vaccination status of everyone in the database is known. There is no need to estimate the size of the unvaccinated population, which has to be done when other methods are used. Another important thing that they did is they also checked with people who died shortly after vaccination and therefore didn't make it into the official NIMS records. And then they included these people in the vaccinated figures as well. Although they only had this data up to the end of November 2022. So uh, we'll be missing from the December data. So all this ensures that the vaccinated and unvaccinated groups are correct, but there are still confounders. Firstly, older people were generally eligible for vaccination before younger people and also are more likely to be vaccinated overall. But we know that older people are going to have a higher mortality rate. So the ONS account for this by using age standardised mortality rates. Now, there are other confounders that aren't accounted for, and interestingly, they act in opposite directions. Firstly, there is what is known as the healthy vaccine effect. Basically, people who are terminal and expected to die shortly generally don't get vaccinated. Likewise, people who are acutely ill will put off vaccination until they have recovered. This means that shortly after age groups become eligible for vaccination, you will see an increase in mortality in the unvaccinated in that age group because the unvaccinated group has decreased in size and contains a higher proportion of terminal and acutely ill people than it previously did. Countering this is comorbidities. People who, who had comorbidities that made them more likely to have poor outcomes if they caught COVID were prioritised for vaccination and also were more likely to be vaccinated in general. And as with older people, these people generally have higher mortality rates than the general population. So this is what the age standardised death rates look like. These graphs are using the ONS data and were put together by someone who goes by the handle of victim of maths on Twitter. And I rather like the pink, so I decided to use them instead of wasting time plotting my own. So the pink lines are the unvaccinated and the yellow lines are the vaccinated. And the shaded area shows the confidence intervals. 
Personally, I would have preferred the vaccinated to be pink because yellow doesn't suit me, but what can you do? So as you can see, mortality rates are consistently lower in the vaccinated compared with the unvaccinated. And this is regardless of whether you are looking at all-cause mortality, COVID mortality or non-COVID mortality. However, you will notice that the difference in mortality rates for the unvaccinated compared with the vaccinated does decrease over time. There are two reasons for this. Firstly, in the early months, we are seeing the healthy vaccinee effect that I previously discussed. Secondly, you can only die once. So people who have already died either directly or indirectly from COVID have been removed from the data set and therefore aren't around to die later. And we know that the majority of people in the UK have been exposed to the virus. So as with the previous data releases from the ONS, the newly released data shows the exact opposite of what you would expect if anti-vaxxers were correct and vaccines were causing excess mortality. So have anti-vaxxers accepted they are wrong or have they doubled down on their nonsense? As you may have guessed, it's the latter. Anti-vaxxers have come up with a number of creative ways to cast doubt on the ONS data. None of them make any sense, but they are creative. And it just so happens that Professor Norman Fenton has covered a lot of them in a recent interview on Dr John Campbell's channel. Let's have a look at what he had to say. And we and other people identified multiple flaws and in that data, we actually complained to the statistics regulator about it. Now, maybe it was a result of our complaints um, that there was this sort of seven-month delay in publishing the latest report. I think Professor Fenton may be suffering slightly from delusions of grandeur here. The chances that the ONS delayed their release because of his baseless complaints are zero. As they explained in their notice, the release was delayed because they were creating a new data set using the 2021 census data instead of the previous 2011 census data. This was from the previous report, right, because this was the problems we identified in the previous report. So we want to see in the latest report if anything's been fixed with respect to this. So what you can see is that the non-COVID age standardised mortality rate is much higher in the unvaccinated than the ever vaccinated. And this is what is causing, this is what is driving the, the all-cause mortality, because actually the COVID numbers are relatively small in comparison with the non-COVID rates. And what you can see is evidence here that this must be a problem with the data, because if this is non-COVID mortality, yeah. what the hell... Has yeah. the vaccination got anything to do with this? Right? People, these should be the same. What this is suggesting, especially you've got that massive peak at the beginning there, which yeah, is actually, actually evidence of just simple misclassification. So people right? never, never Why vaccinated. On earth though, yeah. Should the unvaccinated be dying of non COVID reasons? And the <laughs> yeah. other thing is, in, you see the ever vaccinated, yeah, that ever one. vaccinated non COVID mortality rate is lower than the historical mortality rates pre COVID. So what this is saying, apparently, in their data, mm. is that, according to this, the vaccination has some miracle death-preventing powers for non-COVID illness. <laughs> and and stopping that, people dying. Yeah, yeah, from, yeah. Whereas, whereas it's causing people to die who are unvaccinated for things other than COVID. <laughs> and because of that peak yeah. at the beginning, it's causing them to die at the very time when yeah. the vaccine rollout is where it's rolled out. So when you when you roll out the vaccine, all the unvaccinated suddenly drop dead. Yeah. Yeah. Of non-COVID. Of non-COVID. Non -COVID. So what this graph proves is a systematic bias of confounding of one or more of misclassification of vaccinated deaths as unvaccinated, underestimating the proportion, the population proportion of unvaccinated. And also there is probably a healthy vaccine bias here, mm. which is that the you know, the healthier people 
you know, people who you know, go to their GP a lot are the ones more likely to get vaccinated. Well, that's fine. But in that case, if there's such a bias, you, you would always, in studies like this, you would always adjust for it. You'd have to adjust the all-cause mortality rates to take account of that bias. And they haven't done that. And all that bias is loaded in to that to those all-cause mortality overall figures that you saw. Now, if you the next slide shows that they have not fixed this problem in the latest data, it's actually got worse. So move on to the next slide. Yep. That is the same data, the non-COVID age standardized mortality rate for the un, for the unvaccinated at the top against the ever vaccinated. You've got that same massive bias. These lines should be the same. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's just so the problem has not only not nonsense. been fixed. Yeah, it's got it's worse. Got a lot, it's got a lot worse, mm. and they have not adjusted in any way for this massive bias. Yeah. yeah. This is a perfect example of someone assuming they know more about a field than they do. Anyone familiar with the effects of COVID or infectious diseases in general would expect to see increased mortality amongst the unvaccinated, even for non-COVID deaths. Firstly, there is the healthy vaccinee effect that I previously described. This has nothing to do with what Fenton claims it is the healthy vaccinee effect. It's rather nonsensical to claim that healthy people are more likely to visit their GPs and not particularly relevant because people didn't get their COVID vaccines at regular GP visits. There was a mass vaccination campaign. Interestingly, the phenomenon of not vaccinating people if they are terminal and about to die is something that Dr. Campbell should be familiar with. I know this because I actually sent him an email explaining it when he misunderstood something that the Australian Chief Health Officer had said in a media conference. Right, sorry a bit long today, but I'll just finish off with Australia. Um, got an email from um, a doctor in Australia, uh, a research scientist. I haven't got permission to use a second name yet. You can't see her. There we go. This is uh, Susan in Australia. Um, now, she, she did clarify a few things for me. So she said when they talked about case by case. So yesterday, I'm afraid we were having a bit of a go at the Australian authorities who didn't seem to be coming flat out and saying this vaccine is good for people over the age of 65. It turns out they actually weren't saying that. So I, I've been a bit harsh on the Australian um, authorization authorities by the sounds of it so when they say case by case uh, th th they're basically saying that the doctors there can use individual clinical discretion which of course which of course they can um, they're saying no efficacy issue in older people so it works fine with older people it's just um, just um, possibly it might not be appropriate to give some people the vaccine that, that's all they're saying of course, that was back in the day when John was willing to correct his mistakes. Now he just plays lip service to it. It really is quite sad that he has chosen to go down the more profitable misinformation route instead of sticking to presenting the facts. But I digress. There is a reason that non-COVID deaths are higher in the unvaccinated. This figure is from a study that looked at the risk of a number of different cardiovascular complications following COVID. The chart on the left is the hazard ratio and anything to the right of the dotted line means an increased risk. The chart on the right shows the excess burden per thousand people. MACE stands for Major Adverse Cardiovascular Events and includes myocardial infarction, heart attack, stroke, and all-cause mortality. So, as you can see, even after people have recovered from COVID, they have an elevated chance of dying. But these deaths will be recorded as non-COVID deaths. And we also know that being vaccinated reduces your risk of major cardiovascular events following COVID. So it's not remotely surprising that unvaccinated people have a higher non-COVID mortality rate than the vaccinated. And of 
course, the fact that COVID increases your risk of cardiovascular as well as cerebrovascular events is well known. In fact, a number of people with large audiences have covered it on YouTube, including this guy who you might recognise. I'm becoming more concerned about neurological uh, complications or sequelae following COVID infection. Now, a study I'm going to look at today, it's from Nature Medicine, and it shows that people that have had COVID are 42% more likely to get neurological complications compared to their uninfected uh, counterparts. There's increasing evidence that patients that have recovered from COVID-19, perhaps mostly severe cases of COVID-19, but increasingly some evidence that even people that have had milder COVID-19 can be left with some residual cardiac problems afterwards, some heart problems. Hmm, curious. Anyway, let's see what else Professor Fenton had to say to Dr. Campbell. So going on to the next slide, have they, have they um, fixed the problem of the unvaccinated proportion being too low? Absolutely not. So at the moment, I think they're estimating that the unvaccinated proportion overall is 10%, but it's much too high. We know yeah. that. Yeah. So this table, I mean, Claire Craig sent me this table. So thanks to her for that. It, again, it's taken straight from, it takes a little bit of work to get this data mm. out, the ONS data, but it's, it, it's straight from their data. Mm. And I think it was Igor Tudor, as an example, showed how you can prove this data is wrong. So he picked on the example there of March 2022 in yep. the age 50 to 59 category. Yep. And the ONS estimate of the proportion of unvaccinated, and it is only, it is only an, an estimate. They can only ever estimate how many are unvaccinated. They, they were saying it was six, just done, it was 6.19% of the 50 to 59 year olds were unvaccinated. But as he noted, if you go to the UK HSA week 13 vaccine surveillance report for that exact month on page 17, and you know, I'll send, you can have the slides, people can click on mm. that link mm. and, you'll, and you'll see this as evidence. No, no 17, you'll find that 87% of the 50 to 59 age group were vaccinated in March 2022. That means that 13% were unvaccinated, not 6.19% here. I, there were over twice as many the proportion was over twice that that the ONS is estimating. And that is a massive difference when it comes to calculating, because that is effectively the denominator yep. for these age standardised mortality. In fact, for any mortality metric, whether it's the raw mortality rate or the age standardised one. Mm -hmm. So that problem has not been fixed. By the way, if you are wondering who Claire Craig is, she is a member of the Heart Group who is on record admitting to wanting to spread misinformation about COVID vaccines. Here she is suggesting they should see the thought that vaccines cause COVID. Certainly wouldn't be my first choice as a data source. And in fact, she couldn't possibly have created a table showing the proportion of the population that is vaccinated according to the data because the ONS doesn't provide the data to do this. Firstly, as I explained at the beginning of the video, the ONS database is not the whole population. It is only people who were included in the 2021 census who have vaccination records. Secondly, the ONS does not provide any data on the number of people in any group. All data is in person years, which appears to be what Dr. Craig has used for her calculations. But it isn't valid to use person years as a proxy for number of people because individuals move from one group to another over time. This means in any one month, some people will switch from the unvaccinated group to the vaccinated group. But what about the claim that the proportion of the population that is unvaccinated in this group is 13%? Is this correct? Almost definitely not. The denominator used to calculate this percentage is the NIMS register, and this is problematic as is explained in this UK HSA blog. 
The NH National Register called NIMS includes everyone who registered with the NHS and is therefore eligible to be called forward for a vaccine. Although NIMS is not perfect, it represents each unique individual who is being targeted for the vaccination program and provides the only comparable information on key criteria for those who are targeted and those who are vaccinated. One of the basic problems with NIMS is that it contains some people who were registered with the NHS but may have moved, for example, overseas. But these people have not yet been removed from the database. These are often called ghosts. Because vaccine uptake has been so high, even a small number of additional people included in the database will inflate the number recorded as unvaccinated. Of course, even if the 13% number was correct, it is irrelevant. The ONS database only includes people whose vaccination status is known. There are no assumptions made about the size of each group. If someone dies who isn't in the database, that person is not included in the calculations. Got it. Here, so just, just, just for example, take a look at, let's say, the 70 to 79 group. You can see that the, the absolute number of COVID deaths there, yeah. it's, it's still it's quite high. It, obviously, it's much higher than the, in the, un, in the vaccinated and the unvaccinated, because obviously still lots more people in that age group are vaccinated and unvaccinated. But forget about that. We were told, weren't we, that the vaccination was going to stop hospitalisation and death of COVID. You weren't going to die from COVID if you were vaccinated. Well, look at those COVID deaths in the vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously more people are dying in the vaccinated group. Most people are vaccinated. And Professor Fenton did actually point that out earlier in the video. But his claim that we were told that the vaccine would stop everyone from dying from COVID is simply not true. It is well known that not everyone can be protected by vaccines. Vaccination relies on you having a properly functioning immune system and not everyone does. This is why people who aren't assholes do what they can to avoid passing on viruses to people who are more vulnerable. And, of course, Professor Fenton has also conveniently forgotten that you are classified as vaccinated the moment you receive your first vaccine and you have no protection against COVID at this time. Next one. That one. No, yep. Next one. Next one. Yeah, that's it. So, oh, sorry, so that he, one. Yeah. he then looked, he's, yeah, he's then looking at the, the, the number of vaccinated deaths relative to the vaccination population for that age group. And what you can see here is <clears throat> the ever vaccinated population, because it's, it's not a line, it's got the confidence intervals there. Yeah, it's yeah. basically generally lower than the number of people dying. And so here's what he says. This is his conclusion. Consistently, we see elevated mortality rates for the vaccinated since the start of 2022, when COVID represents less than 10% of deaths. Mm. But the vaccinated are disproportionately, you know, more of, more, more of the, all, all of the deaths. So, again, this is real evidence, especially for that age group, that the that the vaccine is doing more harm than there's more risk than benefit to the vaccine in that yeah. age group. Yeah, that, that, that's really clear from that, isn't so, it? 18 uh, to 39s. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then in the next one, um, oh, and for non-COVID deaths, look at that. They're, they don't even intersect those lines. They don't even mm. intersect. It's, it's consistently well above you know, the, the deaths are well above the proportion of people vaccinated. So, 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 so that, it, that's, that's it, clear. Know, the, the, deaths, the deaths in the vaccinated are higher than the deaths in the unvaccinated. Yeah, yeah. In the 18 to 39. Well, it's that, you know, when you take, well, you take account, yep, yeah, and it takes account of the proportion of people vaccinated. So that is evidence. Why, for, why, is, it, why for, is it this on um, the front page of the newspaper? Lack papers? of safety. The reason it isn't on the front page of newspapers is because it is total bollocks. And I can't believe that Professor Fenton, with his knowledge of statistics, doesn't realise this. The person who prepared this graph is comparing apples and oranges or cows and 
peaks. Yes, there's some cows in the peaks. The proportion of the population who are vaccinated comes from the UK HSA data, which underestimates the proportion of vaccinated people, whereas the proportion of deaths comes from the ONS database, which has a higher proportion of vaccinated people. So obviously, if the proportion of vaccinated people is higher, the proportion of vaccinated people dying will also be higher. Fenton literally pointed out the discrepancy in the numbers earlier in his talk, and now he's trying to use these different numbers for a direct comparison. I honestly can't believe that he seriously thinks this is valid. So in summary, the new ONS data release is consistent with previous releases and shows that the unvaccinated are dying at higher rates than the vaccinated. Anti-vaxxers have done their best to discredit this data, but their arguments are invalid. If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember, this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, and it is a bit of a long one, this one, thank you for listening. And if you've liked or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee or Cindy, who is hiding down there, a treat. We really appreciate your support. We will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future. So if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.